I know you're a scholar of Pascal, and my father said that everybody should read the 72nd Ponce at least once in his life. And, uh, and, and as you're well aware, I mean, that's the one that deals with proportionality and this idea that the human being straddles these two abysses, the abyss of nothingness and uh, from, from which he came and the abyss of infinity by whom he came. And, and he argues in there that only God can know both nothing and infinity. We're incapable of that. And it seems to me that nihilism is people that are looking at the nothing and forget about the infinity. And they've, in a sense, turned their back on that. And uh, Frost has a wonderful poem about uh, the people that look out at the sea. Uh, they cannot look out far. They cannot look in deep. But wh whenever, wh whenever was that any anything that prevented them from doing it? And it seems to me that, you know, the, the, the nihilist is looking, instead of looking at the ocean of infinity, he's looking at the, the wasteland uh, on the shore. He's, he's looking the other way. And, and I think, um, you know, what you've pointed out in this is that our children, and, and Plato reminded us that give me the stories you tell your children and I'll give you your culture, that our children are growing up on a type of, uh, of popular culture that, that is so corrosive. Um, and over time, I can't see how they could not fall into a type of despair uh, that the, 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 uh, the meaninglessness of life that's presented to them constantly, uh, that, that that would be the result. And so I'm just, I'm curious how you see in terms of our institutions, these liberal arts institutions, how, how can we be better at doing what, um, I think Comte has an essay on a pyrocalia, and uh, uh, Leo Strauss uses that term uh, when he talks about liberal ed education, the idea that vulgarity, which our culture has become very vulgar, and, and, and vulgarity for the Greeks was a pyrocalia. It was inexperience in things beautiful. How do we restore uh, beauty to, our, to a culture that seems to have really lost it? That's a great question. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that one of my uh, favorite things about being with President Hamza is the, the way he weaves uh, long quotations from poetry into all, all that he does. I mean, there's, uh, there's, there is an eloquence and beauty, and that is one of the ways, right? It's by adults speaking to young people, especially in our educational institutions, uh, but more broadly, in ways that give them an appreciation of the beauty of language. Right? We're using language all the time, and our language has become so coarsened that we don't experience beauty in it. They, um, the German philosopher Wittgenstein uh, has a great line, the limits of my language mark the limits of my world. And what liberal education offers to young people is an expansion of their vocabulary. So they can actually not just impress people at cocktail parties and talk intelligently in meetings, but so that they can actually see the world in a richer way. You can look at something, a painting, a beautiful, uh, a beautiful building, uh, a, a great work of art. And if you don't have the vocabulary to describe what you're experiencing, you are to some extent insensitive to what you're experiencing, or at least you can't experience it on the deepest level. So giving students a vocabulary so that they can more richly perceive and understand and express their own experiences is one of the keys. It's also that vocabulary uh, and the stories and texts that we read in our curricula give students standards give students a sense of what it would mean to pursue the truth, to pursue goodness, to pursue beauty. And at least after they've had that, they will have the grounds in everything else they're experienced for saying something's missing. Nihilism 
is being unable to say something's missing. There's a great line in Shakespeare's King Lear, this is not the worst so long as we can say this is the worst. The worst would be to experience something that's horrible and not even know that it's horrible. Right. Right. So to, to give our young people at a minimum the ability to know that something's missing and to be able to start to articulate what that is from the resources that we've given them through our education, the real danger in our culture is that we sense that things are a mess, but we can't really name what's missing. And without an education, especially a deeply spiritual education, you lack the resources to identify what's missing. And you can even begin to lack the sense that something is missing at all. 